We never realised the amount of asbestos that they actually had contained in their tugs. In fact, 30% of their fleet nationally had asbestos. Systems failed and you know we've, we've worked with the company to make sure that safe environments have been created, asbestos has been removed, asbestos registry is being created and even after we've done all that work they purchased two tugs internationally, brought them into Australia, they arrived in Newcastle and were absolutely riddled with asbestos to the point they were put on heavy lifts and taken back overseas for the remedial work of asbestos removal, never to return to this country. There was 950 counts of ACMs on the two tugs, 950. That is just complete failure. Chevron is the major shareholder and operators of the $70 billion Gorgon project. Gorgon Partnerships, partnerships aren't new in this country. They've been used with the single purpose and design to remove unionised labour from the towage sector. It's shoddy contracting, it's sham contracting. There is inherent risk to the workers that probably don't understand at the time when they're signing on to these things. You get paid a lump sum. You don't get a, a fortnightly or a weekly wage like most workers and you don't pay your tax fortnightly or weekly like most employees in this country. You are responsible for your own workers' compensation insurance. You are responsible for your own superannuation. You are responsible for your own travel arrangements. You are responsible potentially for the damage that you may cause to a ship that you're moving in and out of a port. Take it into account, some of these ships are, you know, $200 million worth of investment. I don't think you've got the insurance that's gonna cover you if you happen to bend one of them around a wharf or run it up a reef. So it adds to the uncertainty around shipping in this country, like flag of convenience. I would call it the flag of convenience of towage. We've seen a bout of privatisation of our port authorities. They don't have any competition. They're monopolies in their own right. Essentially used to facilitate trade, now being used to generate profit. Now that means it comes at a cost. And that means that costs must be cut. And where they cut is at the operations level of the port. So in terms of your pilotage, in terms of your mooring gangs, in terms of your towage, all of these ancillary services that make a port function are under attack. And we need to go into a round of regulatory reform that ensures that standards are maintained in terms of deliverance and safety in these ports because they'll be the first things to go. Victoria, for example, which is yet to be privatised but soon will be, the only standard applied to issuing a licence to moor in Melbourne is you must have your labour available within 90 minutes. No safe work systems, nothing. You just have to be able to get the bodies to the job in 90 minutes. Now how the hell is that regulating a service in a port? In Tasmania, to get a stevedoring licence. Now you can get a stevedoring licence for a day in Tasmania and it'll cost you $250. How the hell is that regulating an industry to make sure that there's certainty to make sure that there's a skill level that's maintained, to make sure that there's compliance with the oh and Acts. This is just a race to the bottom at its worst. In towage, if we don't meet the challenge to enforce regulatory reform that maintains basic safety standards, basic working standards, we're probably gonna fail our members in that sector and I see this as a key part of our work for the next four years. We're getting targeted because we're effective at looking after workers' interests, including the interests of the company because we negotiate in new technology. There's three people on tugs. When I went away to see there was six or there was seven in some areas, you know, and now it's down to three. So you don't get rewarded by cooperative behaviour and sitting down and negotiate. In many of these areas you get penalised. So port services are an area of leverage and that what they're trying to do is remove any leverage from working men and women. Who's port? Our port! Who's port? Our port! Who's port? Darwin Port has been leased to a Chinese company for just over 500 million for 99 years. You know, you do the math and it's not a very good outcome for the community given that this was a, a port that was profitable for the government. It's got some real problems there, you know. The only commitment for those port workers in Darwin is that they're protected for the life of the agreement, which expires in 2018. 
we had that meeting and uh, the, the CEO basically told the guys nothing again, all the uncertainty was building up and they came out the front and then all the wharfies came around the corner, you know, about 20 of them in solidarity. It was really exciting stuff, you know, for a small place like Darwin. For those wharfies to come out in solidarity and the numbers that they did, it was just great for those port workers to see. In WA, we've been able to form a lobby group with the farmers, not our traditional allies, but they also recognise the importance of ports to particularly island state nations. The uh, sale of the port of Brisbane, they actually listed for 99 years. There was promises made to the workers there that uh, their jobs are safe. Well, they're all contractors now. That's how safe it was. The port, uh, when it was taken over, they immediately increased all charges by 30%. That port was making 480 million profit a year. Now it's going to someone else other than the Queensland community. What we're calling for is for the, the sale of the port to be put on hold, for it to be stopped. We cannot trust the CLP to do such a major transaction for the Northern Territory. We cannot trust.